what is a nice cardiologist like you doing in a place like this? My name is Rajni Kanthachukopa. I'm a consultant interventional cardiologist at Clinical Street BMC Cardiac Center in Pune, Darussalam. And today I'll be talking about distal transradial axis for treatment of EVFIS. Our patient was a 62 year old man with a left radiocephalic fistula, which was created about a year ago. He recently had flow issues and was referred to us for a fistulogram and intervention. A pre procedure ultrasound showed stenosis in the juxtanastomotic segment of the way. We decided to attempt a distal transradial approach. We frequently do our left or right brachiocephalic fistula interventions from a traditional radial approach, but this would be too close to the anastomosis of radiocephalic fistula. So we opted for a puncture in the anatomical snuff box uh, for the distal radial artery, which was away from the anastomosis. We used a six French Avanti pediatric femoral introducer sheet, 7.5 centimeters long. The picture here is, is of the patient that we're describing in the case. Uh, we inserted uh, the sheet over a 021 wire. The wire initially passed into the radial artery and the sheet followed it. We slowly pulled the sheet back under fluoroscopic guidance as we injected small contrast puffs until we ended in the radial artery just away from the anastomosis. Our initial angiogram looked like this. We can see the contrast filling the radial artery as well as the vein, and you can see stenosis in the swing vein section. Uh, the orange arrow here points to the tip of the sheet, and the green arrows point to the stenosis in the extranastomotic portion of the swing way. The stenosis was crossed with a 035 uh, wire with the support of a bird catheter. A uh, check angiogram confirmed the stenosis and the uh, orientation of the vein and the artery at a different angle. We did initial pre dilatation with a 3 by 40 mm balloon at 16 atmospheres. This allowed us to pass the uh, burn catheter higher up and take completion uh, pictures of the uh, proximal veins and the central veins to make sure that there was no other significant stenosis. We were able to then come back to the vein and do further pre dilatation. We tried a 5 mm mustang balloon at 24 atmospheres which still left a residual constriction, which you can see here quite clearly. We decided to try a scoring balloon. We swapped the O3-5 wire for a O18 wire through the bird catheter, then deployed a Scoflex 5M scoring balloon. At 12 atmospheres, it still couldn't crack the lesion. We then attempted a cutting balloon, uh, the peripheral cutting balloon from Boston. There was initial wasting, but subsequently cracked the lesion. Uh, we confirmed the position of the balloon using contrast injections. The picture uh, here shows uh, an injection to confirm that the balloon is placed within the vein. And again, with the balloon fully inflated, we did a small test to make sure that the artery is filling well and the uh, balloon, inflated balloon, remains within the vein. With all that, we got an excellent final result. You can see uh, the flow in the vein at the end of the procedure. Clinically, the patient had an excellent throw. The sheet was removed and TR band was applied for hemostasis as we normally do. The patient was able to undergo dialysis the next day from the fistula. In uh, summary, uh, distal transradial axis is a well established approach now for coronary angiograms and intervention. And we propose that it could be a safe and elegant option for interventions in uh, AV fistulas, especially in radiocephalic AV fistulas. They can help us avoid inserting uh, sheets into the fistula itself. And also, the, with single puncture, we can have access to the entire length of the venous limb, as well as the radial artery. And hopefully, this will help us achieve procedural success and a good clinical outcome. Thank you.